Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome to Muslima Insight. Today in Muslima Insight, I would like to start off by extending my gratitude and deepest thanks to the Almighty Allah that has granted me the opportunity to be a delegate at the World Alliance of Religions Peace Summit recently held at UNISA Pretoria. And with me in studio, coming to share with us the objectives of the company that hosted the event, the Heavenly Culture World Peace Restoration of Light. I've got two representatives from their company, Mr. John Smith, uh, John Frith, uh, my apologies, as well as Sizwe Mayisela. A warm welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. us. Um, coming to um, this particular summit, um, in my personal uh, capacity as CEO, founder and DAI, of Muslim Youth and Dialogue, mm -hmm. um, I know what inspired me to, to start mm -hmm. Muslim Youth and Dialogue and I really would like to start off um, what has inspired your chairperson, mm -hmm. Mr. Manhi Lee, to really start off um, the, the Heavenly Culture um, World Peace Restoration of Light, if you can share with us. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Sizwe Maisena and uh, I represent uh, HWPL, uh, which stands for Heavenly Culture, uh, World Peace and Restoration of Light. Uh, it was the founder, like you said, uh, is Mr. Manhili, and uh, he was a war veteran uh, who mm -hmm. took part in the Korean War, which was between 1950 and 1953, and he saw what uh, the horrors of war and what it did to not only his community, to his family, but to his country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he truly decided that no nation needs to go through such uh, terrible things, you know, death, uh, pain and suffering of the worst kind and even starvation. Mm -hmm. You know, a mm -hmm. uh, country went through these atrocities and he decided, uh, I can say inspiration from heaven, mm -hmm. that he doesn't want this not only to happen in his own country, but it shouldn't happen around the world. And um, in 2010, what he did was a declaration of unification for mm -hmm. the Korean, Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And then in 2013, he also declared the very first in the world, the World Peace Declaration, mm -hmm. uh, which has really united a lot of youth around the world, and as well as political leaders, religious leaders, you know, traditional leaders, cultural leaders standing behind him in his uh, initiative to mm -hmm. sort of fight, not to say fight, but to create peace mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with what he calls heavenly culture, you know, mm -hmm. truly looking at life mm -hmm. as the main uh, objective, preserving life and mm -hmm. truly valuing human life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he says, especially to leaders, mm -hmm. um, if they really love their people, uh, they shouldn't be sending them to war to die. Makes know. a lot of sense. Yeah, they shouldn't be sending them to war to die. They should be protecting, especially the young people, because he was a young uh, war veteran, mm -hmm. sent to war at a very young age. And he, he said it took a lot of, away from him. And think about the young people that perished. Mm -hmm. They didn't get to blossom, to mm -hmm. live out their dreams or what visions they had for their lives because they had to serve their nation, you know. Mm -hmm. And some of them died for something they didn't necessarily believe in. And that's very cruel uh, on the part mm -hmm. of the leaders, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chairman Lee truly feels that this is not something that should take place, Absolutely. especially when we can do something about it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, like I said, his inspiration came from heaven and he truly felt that as a human being uh, on a quest of uh, restoring and sharing a message of light, he has mm -hmm. to spread the message of peace. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's done so for 17th trips now coming to South Africa. Uh, in the past three years, mm -hmm. he's toured the world 17 times, and he's currently 85 years old. That's oh. that's amazing, right? That's really showing <laughs> a lot of dedication to yeah. to to his vision. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know also for for myself in in Muslim youth and dialogue, mm. um, coming as a as a representative representative mm. and affiliate member to to the Heavenly Culture Group, um, what inspired me at the time was also. 2010, mm -hmm. 2011, mm -hmm. with the Arab Spring that happened, mm -hmm. seeing the footage of um, the the uprising in Egypt, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really that deep sense of, if you look at the destruction, like you were mentioning, um, 
what war does, the mm -hmm. heartache, the pain, mm -hmm. mothers having to send off their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and for me it was the, the Arab Spring mm -hmm. that inspired me, that made me realize the youth need a voice. Yes. There are grave human rights atrocities being committed mm -hmm. that's not being addressed. Mm -hmm. And of course also definitely uh, being a revert, it's about the interfaith dialogue and discussion because a mm -hmm. lot of people didn't understand mm -hmm what is really going on in the Muslim world. Yeah. And it is yeah. fantastic for me personally, from where I'm sitting, mm. to be an affiliate mm. to such mm. a beautiful, wonderful world vision, because mm. in my belief also, mm. peace is possible. Yes. Um, if we go a little bit further and we look at the uh, makeup mm -hmm. of, of the um, HWPL, mm -hmm. can you explain to us the different groups that is within in the in the mother body, if we want to call it that, or call okay. it that. Uh, yes, we've got the the parent company or mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify things, we are an NPO, mm -hmm. a non-profit organization, and uh, it originates from South Korea uh, and is registered with the uh, Korean Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. and. Uh, then that is the main parent body. Then we have the youth wing, uh, which is the International Peace Youth Group with uh, John Frith represents. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically the youth are there as well as uh, a tool mm -hmm. um, that is uh, used uh, by HWPL to create peace uh, through cultural activities, through conferences, through dialogue as well. And whatever other means that are suitable to the climate, you know, uh, Say, for instance, if we do something in Cameroon, it might not be suitable to do it in another state. Of course. But to do mm -hmm. peace activities as youth that unite and cross and transcend barriers of religion, culture, you know, mm -hmm. uh, language, you know, uh, to, to show people that there are actually a lot of things as human beings that tie us together. Mm -hmm. That know? we have in common. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So the youth uh, are basically uh, the youth division. They do that. Uh, and then there's IWPG, mm -hmm. which is an independent, but it's part of the movement. You know, mm -hmm. so one of the tools as well used to create peace, but it's independent and was started by Chairwoman Kim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the IWPG. And they they normally run their programs on, what is the the heading or title they use, the She Can Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of their forums or their cultural activities or education programs are run through the She Can mm -hmm. uh, Project. And it's basically uniting the hearts of women leaders and mothers in the world, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just to be the heart of, 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 of mankind and truly say that as women, uh, in the world we live in, we also have a role to protect our children mm -hmm. and to protect mm -hmm. society, our communities, you know, mm -hmm. with the mother's heart and the mother's love. Mm -hmm. And we know we all come from the womb, you know, mm -hmm. which is the source of life where the mm -hmm. seed is planted. Mm -hmm. And this is what IWPG represents, you know, mm -hmm. where the seed of peace is planted in that womb and mothers should protect it and make sure that it's nurtured mm -hmm. and instill mm -hmm. it, educate, because mothers educate the children. That's in the lap of education. Yes. Is, yeah. is the lap of of the mother absolutely yeah. yeah and also what makes a lot of sense is that um, you've mentioned the two groups the youth yeah. group mm -hmm. um, the IPYG mm -hmm. International Peace Youth Group and of course then the women's group mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. um, just to take it a few steps back is what type of activities can um, the youth look forward to to engage in when you say they dialogue how do mm -hmm. they dialogue mm -hmm. is there different topics and mm -hmm. because I think what what also um, can perhaps go wrong is when people start to debate, especially, yes. um, yeah. you know, when it comes to religious issues mm -hmm. and that type of thing. How do you um, how do you do your dialogues and your discussions among the youth in particular? Okay, would mm -hmm. John, would you like to answer that? Or yeah, sure. so International Peace Youth Group, mm -hmm. uh, we have about over a hundred different branches in over 70 countries. Wow. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of different projects in the different countries uh, specific to what's happening in those regions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what we're trying to do is, our slogan, what we say is when the youth of the world unite, mm -hmm. all wars, wars will cease. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like Caesar's already said, it, it's the young people that die in wars and yeah. often we are kind of just sent off as fodder for wars in something we don't truly believe in. Yes. Um, and we never get paid back for all mm -hmm. the lives lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
if we all can be educated mm -hmm. um, and be aware of what's happening and stand together as mm -hmm. young people, mm -hmm. then it's possible it can end. Mm -hmm. in and say no to war. Say no say to no, war. Not we to won't do it. Excellent. And hearing what happened with the chairman in South and North Korea and how there was just the divide put up and mm -hmm. they had to just shoot their own family and mm. own brothers who they weren't divided but suddenly politicians and leaders made them divided mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just shows how nonsensical it is almost Absolutely. that something like that can happen yeah. Yeah. and it's not just that country but many countries that has happened mm -hmm. yeah they actually take advantage of the of the youth yeah. um, still finding their adulthood their yeah. power and then they shift it off to go and fight in a war um, yeah. on that note it is time for us to go to an ad break stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Um, before the break, we were discussing the International um, Youth Group for Peace, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. we also touched on how wars actually affect the younger generation, mm -hmm. the youth yeah. that are they are just shifted off as if they they had no say in the matter. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you've mentioned something very interesting that you effectively tailor make um, whatever youth group it is to the respective country or mm. culture it is that, that you're going to engage in uh, with the, the engage in with. Now to ask also is um, considering the African Renaissance as initiated mm. by the former President Thabo Mbeki mm. from South Africa, um, how do you see IPYG fit in with those objectives? Okay, uh, yes. <laughs> The African Renaissance, you know, is something uh, Thabo Mbeki uh, repopularized, I could say. Mm. Uh, but it's really a call for Africa to unite. Mm. And, uh, and their basis were for things like uh, business and uh, as well as economic development, as well as technological advancement, you know, education, mm -hmm. uh, which is all well and good. But if there's no peace, Mm. Uh, it affects all those areas. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it affects, it truly uh, makes those things not possible, mm -hmm. you know. So how we've tied it in with the African Renaissance is uh, through heavenly culture, we want uh, people to unite, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, as the African Renaissance is calling for Africa to unite, uh, we are calling Africa to unite for peace mm -hmm. under the... Mm -hmm. uh, the African Renaissance banner, if you could say, mm -hmm. because if Africa unites for peace and all these other things that they want, like stability in, in the economy, uh, development, and uh, for young people to be able to strive in the growing economy, then mm -hmm. there must be peace. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. the African leaders truly need to put peace as the main priority. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you say from your experience um, hampers these peace, peace efforts? in the various countries? Well, <laughs> I think what hampers peace in most countries, we can say, is people's desire for their own mm. needs to be above other people. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Self-advancement. Um, yes. And also a big thing as well, I think, is lack of education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the things we've learned uh, preparing for the summit, visiting different religious leaders and youth groups, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that everyone is actually very similar mm -hmm. and everyone wants the same things. Mm -hmm. before, before I was involved in this work, I didn't know much about different religions or, um, and most people actually are just brought up in their religion, mm -hmm. not having a, a proper understanding of other religions, you just see what you see on the news, mm. uh, maybe mm. it's good or bad, but mm -hmm. through learning, through going through this process, we've learned that everyone actually has the same dreams and hopes, mm -hmm. um, and we are more similar than different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a lot of uh, the problem is in various countries is that people don't know this actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's what I'm hearing you say, it is the absolute lack of education. Yeah. And I also think what um, holds a lot of people back is the fear of being influenced. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for us, um, from an Islamic perspective, mm -hmm. there's a verse in the Quran that clearly says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that verse in particular was revealed at a time where certain children 
of parents that became Muslim at the time of, of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be mm. upon him, did mm. not want to be Muslim. Mm. And he the Prophet, peace be upon him, supplicated and he asked the Almighty Allah for guidance in this. And that's when this verse was revealed. Mm -hmm. And to leave the youth actually be, and f because God the Almighty actually guides. Yeah. For mm. me, the process really truly is about sharing knowledge. Mm -hmm. it, what that person is going to do with that knowledge mm. is up to that individual. Yeah. But I think also for me, um, through education comes mm. knowledge and understanding. Mm. And when mm. you understand me as a Muslim, or I understand you as a Christian or whatever mm. other faith, mm. there is the automatic um, attribute that sets in to become more tolerant. Yes. Because mm. now you understand. Yes. And when you have tolerance, you can create the world of peace. Yeah. Coming, uh, taking it a little bit further and just to um, bring in the other um, affiliated uh, associations like the, like IFAPA, mm -hmm. the Interfaith Action Group for Peace in Africa. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, I know it is NICSA, the National Interfaith Council um, mm -hmm. of South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that they also affiliated. So do you obviously work with all these bodies together in these different countries to, to establish and work towards these objectives? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, because what we believe is we don't want to come and take uh, what is already been established or re start anew. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. uh, in building peace, it's also you have to have a good human relations. You know, yes. and uh, mm -hmm. truly work together and also believe and trust mm -hmm. the people that are in that nation uh, also that yes. are working for peace. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a good way of uh, building relationships for our organization mm -hmm. and truly showing the world that. That uh, all different people—I mean, all different people—want the same thing. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we all want peace. And working with Nixa uh, has been incredible, as well as IFAPA and mm -hmm. uh, the African Youth Union. Mm -hmm. And we've also worked with UNISA just specifically for mm -hmm. the summit. Uh, they were also great, as well as the SRC. Mm -hmm. So we all came and agreed that peace in the world, but also in Africa, is necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was something we were easily and comfortably able to agree on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, this is what we do. We work with everybody uh, within that country that mm -hmm. shares the same vision mm -hmm. and, you know, doesn't have their own self-interest, but Absolutely. truly have. And I think that is so very much key because it is that level of maturity where you have interdependence. Mm -hmm. uh, the interdependence, of course, is being able to, to realize that you don't have everything, you don't mm. know everything, mm. but mm. To, as a collective we can really, really make a difference. Yes. Um, taking it a little bit further in considering sport and culture mm. pertaining to the youth group, um, how do you see sport and culture playing a role in working with the youth? Well, as, as we've spoken, many different people are doing many different things mm -hmm. for the same cause mm -hmm. and we all separate it. But if we all come together, it's much stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just looking at the history of South Africa and how sport united our country, mm -hmm. how the Rugby World Cup, the African uh, League of Nations Soccer Cup, if that's yeah, Nations Cup, African mm -hmm. Nations <laughs> Cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but those events made people come together, mm. transcended mm. religion, race, ideologies, and mm. everyone was one family shouting mm. for one thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's a memory we all treasure very deeply. Mm -hmm. So that kind of unity is possible. Mm -hmm. And um, it always speaks of that recognition within yourself and recognizing that same attributes in another person, yes. that yeah. simple coming together, overlooking, overseeing everything else, but just coming across in your mm. Ubuntu, in your mm. human values yeah, yeah, as being yeah. a human being. Mm, yes. and, and, and from a cultural perspective, um, what do you see the youth engaging in? Well, I think we are so used, we are all very used to the, the way we live at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and people aren't really, ha not many people are happy to change mm -hmm. how they think. Mm -hmm. um, even if we look a few hundred years ago, everyone believed that uh, the earth was the center of the universe and mm -hmm. people that spoke about against that were mm -hmm. were killed mm -hmm. um, And today when people speak about peace, they believe it's impossible mm -hmm. um, But it is actually possible and mm -hmm. it's quite easy to achieve actually if we all can change our mindset mm -hmm. and our culture yes. so we just with regards to culture um, looking towards heavenly culture mm -hmm. um, how we can think that 
the earth provides rain or God provides rain, air, sun, mm -hmm. freely for all of us. And mm -hmm. we the take these things for granted. Mm -hmm. But actually, we should live with each other in thanks for these things. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and also with regards to culture, we should cherish um, each other's cultures and mm -hmm. we can all learn from each other. Yeah. There's so much wisdom and, and fountains of knowledge in each different culture. And instead of judging people for that, mm -hmm. we should take the time to humble ourselves and learn from even even children, even students. Mm -hmm. To have that, to yeah. remove the ego yeah. excessively yeah. and, and yeah. not, f because I think also, um, in particular, um, looking at, at Islam, what you see in the media is people fear what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And they also fear, like I've mentioned earlier, to be influenced. And it's really mm -hmm. just, it boils down to being willing just to educate yourself yeah. so yeah. that you understand that better. Um, and also, I think what, what I can also recall, um, your chairperson mentioned mm -hmm. is we have enough heroes of war. It is time yeah. that heroes of peace starts mm -hmm. to rise. Yeah. On that note, it is time for us to once again go to an ad break. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Um, before the break, we unpacked a little bit more about the youth group mm -hmm. um, and its objectives, sports and culture, and how it can contribute. Mm -hmm. um, and I quickly also just want us to look at the International Women's Peace Group mm -hmm. um, and what role mothers can play. Because like you've rightfully said, the lap of education is that of a mother. Um, and I think also in, in my experience as a couples coach, couples therapist, um, the nucleus of the family is really the mother and the father. And if there's mm. problems there, mm. um, it directly affects the children. Yeah. Um, and of course, in the world, there are grave, um, as there is human rights violations, mm. there are grave women and children mm. rights mm. violations mm. that happen on a daily basis. Mm. When we talk about peace, we talk about world peace, mm. but how mm. can we have world peace if there's no peace in our homes? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us more about the uh, objectives um, that the Women's Peace Group has? Yeah, sure. Um, as you said, women are often, they suffer a lot of abuse um, and often they are looked on as the weaker sex. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, the heart and, and strength of a mother is the most powerful force on mm. the earth. Some, I think it's fair to say that. Mm -hmm. The protective, nurturing heart of the mother. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And what IWPG is trying to do is to unite all the hearts of mothers together, to stand together as the mother of, of children mm -hmm. um, and the mother of the people of the earth and, mm -hmm. and end wars in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and the practical ways they do this is through uh, conferences, education programs, mm -hmm. um, as many as well as many grassroots uh, initiatives in the countries in which they were. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's really to instill in, in women um, that empowerment, that sense of they can make it. You mentioned the program She yeah. Can, and yeah. for me it really rings to the effect that um, women can make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, in, in what we learn in Islam, is that the Almighty Allah has placed into the womb of, mother, of a mother um, more rahma. Rahma is more mercy. And mm. it makes a lot of sense why mm. women plays a vital role in creating mm. peace in yeah. this world. Um, on that note, we have come to the end of today's program. Do look out for the continuation of this interview in our next program. Um, and also um, look out for how you can join these respective platforms. From myself, Adila, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we're sitting here today with the chairman of IQIG, Mr. Mahili, and um, the chairwoman of IWPG, Ms. Kim Nambi. Thank you so much for your time. 네, 두 분께 이렇게 시간을 내주셔서 감사합니다. 예, 반갑습니다. It's a pleasure. <coughs> Um, the first question today is addressed to um, the chairman, please. Is world peace achievable in this generation and how? 네, 세계 평화가 지금 이 시대에 그 가능할 거라고 믿으십니까? 네, 가능합니다. Yes, I believe it is achievable. 어, 지금까지 
As I've mentioned, many people have worked for peace to attain this goal of peace, and they have even received great awards for this. However, as we witness the world now, it is still in chaos and war. Even though I knew this very fact, the reason why I'm working to attain peace and the reason why I started my initiative is because I believe in my solution for peace. I'm confident about it. So what is the solution for peace? You know, many people might be curious about this. I'd like to summarize it. And uh, it's a very simple answer. Many people who ask me, I believe, are that very answer to peace. Within this whole entire world, there is not one person who does not want peace in their communities or in their families. But why do, not we, why do we not have peace? Every individual, if they can work as peace advocates, as peace messengers, as peace bringers, we can have peace in this world. Out of all these people, there is, you could say, a catalyst for peace. This catalyst, I believe, is the heavenly culture. Within the heavenly culture, there is God, the power and the will of God. And another point, another aspect to our work of peace is the International Women's Peace Group. And another aspect is the International Youth Peace Group. They are international women's and international youth peace groups which have been established for the people to unite as one for the very same goal. The women of the world, they have to join in such an organization. And the youth of the world have to join in such an organization as IPYG. We have to unite as one and to collect our efforts under the heavenly culture. It doesn't matter how many men and women you have in this world, how many youth you have in this world. Within those people, if they do not have this culture of peace, if they do not have God with them, we will live in a chaotic world. And that, that is why I say the very first thing we have to look at is heavenly culture, this culture of peace. Because this culture of peace tells us that it is achievable. And of course, to actually make this movement a success, there are other factors involved. And I'm not sure if you know anything about international law, but if you look at the international law itself, in international constitutions and clauses, there is nothing that stops countries from going into war with each other. And therefore, we are working on a constitution to establish on an international scale to bring wars to an end in various countries. Because there has been no such constitution established, these countries do not even fret to go out into war. Another point I'd like to make is that most, and most of the wars that have actually been caused in this war have been caused because of religious disputes and religious conflicts. And if you ask all the religions, they all say they believe in God. However, even though they claim to meet God, I can assure you, if you ask God himself, he will say, I have nothing to do with those people who are killing each other. Why do you feel this? Why do you agree with this? It's because we have thousands of religions in this world. Does this mean we have thousands of different gods? We all say we believe in one God, but why are there so many different religions? And we have so many different scriptures. We have different cultures, and we also have different... They, they, they talk differently, and they do things differently. But there, no law says we should kill each other, and we should go into war with each other. No religious script says this, because I do not believe the Creator will want His creation to be destroyed. I do, not, I do not believe so. What this shows us, the many religions and the many scripts, it shows us that the religious world is corrupt at this moment. 
So no matter how, many, how much of a good scripture you have in your hand, if you do not keep to that scripture, if you do not obey to that according to that scripture, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter whether there is, there is a God or not. If you are a person in faith, if you do not abide by His law, if you do not obey His will, then you have nothing to do with Him at all. And so, all the religious leaders have to unite together to end this corrupt religious world and to bring back the religious world into the regional state which God wanted it to be. And when this can happen, when religious leaders can become one, we will not have a reason to fight anymore on a religious scale. And I believe that also when we are one together, Many of the people within the Islamic faith will also be united as one. When we become one together, when we, we can unite our collective efforts together, perhaps one day all religion will be united as one. Who knows? But what I would like to say is that if you are part of a religion, you have to know what your religion is talking about. Because when you know exactly what your religion is talking about and you practice that, then you will not fight. And that is why we have established religious unity branches. And I believe through these branches, it will act as a hub for religious leaders to come and speak in dialogue together. At this branch, religious leaders will come together and discuss about their scriptures. They will discuss on how to find common ground. And they will also discuss about their faiths. Throughout the international community, we are establishing these religious unity branches. Do you know what, 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 the, what the slogan and, and what is written on these unity branches? The very logo on these unity branches is Heavenly Culture, World Peace and Restoration of Light. This is the very title, the very name of these unity branches. The reason behind this is so that religious leaders can become one because we all believe in one God, right? And on the political aspect, whether you're a former president, or a, a world leader, or a chief justice, they are the very individuals who govern their nations, but also the very individuals who have the power to establish constitutions within their countries. And I believe that the world leaders have to come together in a, in a summit to sign this international constitution to make it effective. So that is how we work on the political aspect. But in the religious aspect, I believe that we need to create this movement of unition. So the very answer for peace, as you asked before, basically is all individuals becoming an advocate of peace with the heart of peace and like we have put, put the title of peace on the unity branches the people must put a title of peace in their hearts if we do not do this it will not happen but if, if, we, if we make an effort then people will come together if we make the effort it can happen I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, my achievements while working for this peace initiative. Now, this is the country of South Africa. I came here a few times, uh, and one of the times that I came here, I went to the University of Johannesburg for an interview with the students. I talked about my peace initiative and my peace movement. And that there was a, a young student at the University of Johannesburg and he said, I want to be the first member of your youth initiative. So I put him as the first ever youth to, to be enlisted. Now we are meeting with former, former presidents and also current world leaders. And we've been having dialogues with them. 
And the very word that I spoke to them, the very message that I gave to them, was a plea to establish this international constitution and international law and to make it effective. So I drew up a memorandum of understanding and they signed this very memorandum so that they would join us. And importantly, as I mentioned before, I, I met with various religious leaders because this religious world is corrupt and broken, I believe. So I urged them to work together. I urged them to walk with me in this initiative. But I did not just have a verbal agreement. I made them sign an agreement as well. The youth and also the women across the world and peace uh, and, and also organizations working for peace. They have all come to join our initiative. And the most, one of the most important aspects is the press and media, such as yourself. Because the press and media, the reporters, they are the very individuals who can make sure that people who do not know about this initiative can be aware of what is going on. It is a great, it is a great tool of promotion to the international community. So, former presidents and also the chief justices and judicial members have become ambassadors and also a part of our advisory council. So we should have, we should go beyond the divisions of, uh, the divisions of nationalities, and we're working on this international scale, where, where many ambassadors have been sprouting, and I hope that you can be an ambassador for us too. And if you look throughout the world right now, many people say my religion is correct and yours is wrong. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are many conflicts that include the Islamic faith. I do not believe that this is the true meaning of Islam because I have met many of your religious leaders. This religious society and we have to bring an end to many of the conflicts that, is, that, that are ravaging our world. So the religious leaders, the current presidents and former presidents and also judicial members we, did, we, we established and we held a summit last year where many of these leaders, religious leaders, political leaders came together and they promised each other that they would work together in front of various witnesses and I believe in front of God. So we made them also at that setting sign an agreement which, which was a pledge to themselves and also to their people to work for peace and unite for peace. And so I myself, I also wrote uh, to, to many of the leaders of the Islamic faith. I asked them, why are there so many conflicts that are arising throughout the world that include the Islamic faith? How can there be these conflicts? I asked them to, to, to become involved in this initiative. I asked them to be actively involved in peacemaking in many of the conflict nations, which which include the Islamic faith. We, as peacemakers, we have to go beyond the boundaries of race, religion, and ethnicity. We have to go beyond these boundaries that divide us for so long. And because we have to speak to religious leaders, I've also had to study various religious groups. I've also studied... If you go to my house, you'll see a library full of religious scripts because I've had to study them in order to understand the faith, their, their, their thoughts. So, what, from what I've studied about the Islamic religion and various other religions, there is no thing that states, there is no fact that states that you must fight each other and go to war with each other. And therefore, I believe that when these people come together, and join this, such initiatives as ours, there will be peace in this world. How, 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 how many times will you make this interview 
피어뉴 제가 말하는 거를 한 달에 몇 번이나 내 버려도 많은 사람들로 하여금 인식되도록 해야 되죠. 그리고여자가되야되고요 To, 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 the, to, to the man over there, the cameraman, I'm going to give him a nice little badge of peace. <laughs> so he's going to be a part of our membership. Thank you so much, um, Chairman. You know, this is such a great work that you're doing. And there's, there's no one who is doing, who's doing this kind of work to unite religions and to unite different people of the world for the work of peace. So 네. thank you. 너무 귀한 일을 하시고 계셔서 감사하다 말씀 먼저 드리고 싶습니다. 그리고 아마 이런 그 평화 운동은 처음으로 들은 것 같습니다. 이런 그 내용으로 하는 평화 운동이요. 젊은 청년들이요 더 많이 노력하고 하나 돼야 될 것입니다. Because I believe the youth, because you are young, you have to work harder. 왜 그런지 아십니까? Do you know why? 전쟁이 일어나면 청년들이 가서 싸우지. When there is a war, it's brass in any country. It is not old men like me that go to fight. It is the young men. We all live in the same generation. We all live in the same world. But it is not fair that they have to go and fight and lose their lives. They are the ones who have to go and sacrifice their lives. And so, I believe, and history tells us that they have not been reconciled for their losses. Their families. No one youth has been repaid for his sacrifice. The only way we can repay them is to bring them back to life, which is impossible. They only think about their greed, and they want these young people to die for their greed. That is not a fair society that we live in. When we can eliminate wars, we can protect our future. And therefore, That is why I feel the youth, such as yourself, have to be more involved to protect yourselves. The Heavenly Culture, the International Peace Youth Group, and the International Women's Peace Group have become one. Every country has any number of youth groups and women associations. This work must be done by us who believe in God, so that He will be able to rule over the world. Hanun, Mr. Lee is already being called father figure for the youth. He is without a doubt in my mind the only person walking on this planet with a solution able to bring world peace. Ms. Kim is adamant that all the youth in the Mindanao region must meet Mr. Lee if only once. She sees her role as that of a bridge spanning the distance between the youth in Mindanao and the peace advocate. Yes, we welcome the offer of working together and we hope that, yes, to reach out to the young people will be very important, both Christian and Muslim youth. The leaders on both sides should sign an agreement to stop this dispute. Peace is something that should concern everyone. Tomorrow, I am traveling to Mindanao, where I expect to resolve this conflict peacefully. Three of the bishops decide to indicate their allegiance to the cause of peace by signing the agreement before the ceremony. Their heart's desire for peace in Mindanao is now written on the agreement. I'm very glad to have signed that same uh, resolution and movement for peace with Chairman Lee. will also be a way to generate more peace movements and more understanding among the young people of Mindanao. A performance solely for the peace delegates. The simple but heartfelt resonance of their song touches everyone. We will live together as one family of God forever. The World Peace Advocate, a leader for all the women in the world. They have become one in the name of peace.